Hey what's up, it's Zach, and today I'm back in Adobe Illustrator creating an illustration. Um, this is going to be a portrait of a lady and with like horns and kind of in like a mountainy type environment. Um, so I start off with the reference picture and I have a picture over there of what I thought the color scheme was going to be. I end up changing it a little bit as I go, but um, that's just kind of the reference as I start. Uh, the first thing I always do is separate all my layers like always. Um, a layer for my sketch, black, color, background, pretty self-explanatory. Um, so yeah, right now I just try to get the overall like shape and everything, like the most of the forms. Nothing super specific, like as you can see, um, everything's super rough. And something else I do a lot of times in that this stage is I'll create some horizontal lines in the background with the blend tool. I'll just put a line on top, line on bottom, and just kind of, it just varies how many lines I actually have, but I think on this one I have like four or five. Um, and I'll make the drips and everything, or even just the contours of everything, kind of conform to those lines and look like they're actually like breaking and stuff to the lines. And I'm not even really sure why I started doing this or how it really makes sense, but I kind of just did it once and kind of rolled with it because I like the way it looked. So as you can see, I'm starting to do some of the drips on the face. And the only really tip I have for drawing kind of dripping or melting stuff is I used to trace a lot of textures and like real um, paint splatters and just kind of crop those into my stuff and then after tracing them long enough I just figured out how to draw them and like I don't necessarily do things super realistic like things wouldn't always like they don't always follow gravity or whatever but I try to keep them going in the same direction so like on the hood I have one kind of going in at like 45 degree angle that's because that's just the angle that the hood was going and I try to just keep it you know going with the direction that it was going and then like here at the like crease of the hood i try to make it look like it's kind of bouncing off those lines that i put in the background so at this stage i kind of start filling in some of the shadows and stuff and most of the time i use like 30 percent opacity black or 50 percent opacity and then just kind of layer those on top of each other and by layering multiple things on top of each other and with like a lower opacity it kind of gives it a little bit of a painterly feel I think and yeah once again I'm not being super specific on the shading like it's kind of just I'm um, getting the rough stuff in getting like the basic forms down and then I spend a lot of time uh, just kind of refining stuff um, that's where the rabbit hole kind of begins like a lot of times I'll spend way too much time just piddling with stuff and editing stuff and it doesn't really <laughs> You don't really can't really tell that much of a difference at the end, but yeah, it's where uh, the perfectionist part comes out. So yeah, right now I'm starting to work on the background, and I mess with this quite a bit, I think, and actually quite a bit that's not recorded, just coming up with ideas. And so yeah, once again I'm layering, uh, like I think it's 50% opacity reds and 50% opacity whites, and just kind of giving it a little bit more depth like that. And as you can see, I brought in a reference uh, painting of a mountainside with like a stag and a moon dripping down and stuff. So um, that kind of is where I got the idea for the moon running down onto something. So shout out to them. And as you can see, I'm putting some slight backgrounds in the back. Nothing super um, profound or anything, just kind of very light, giving it a little bit of a glow. Brought in a picture of a deer skull for some references for the antlers um nothing super specific once again just kind of giving getting the like general shapes and then going in and layering and layering and layering um i probably should separate things on the layers a little bit better like i should probably put um like do a better job putting my colors but like on the color layer and my blacks on the blacks but honestly towards the end things just get so kind of confusing like I, I know I want it to be on top of something but I don't really care what layer it's going to be on so I mainly just use isolation modes and, to get around like actually layering stuff so I, you'll see me go in and when everything's kind of grayed out that's in isolation mode and I kind of use those as like mini layers inside of the layer so I'll group stuff together and then double click to go inside that group and kind of edit things like that um, and that it's kind of how I stay more organized without actually just adding 50 layers um, because that kind of gets confusing and then you have to go through and like lock one layer to select it like you have to lock the layer 
or lock all the other layers and then just select like command a to select everything on that layer which is like so many clicks just to select everything on like in that group or whatever that you're wanting to keep together so if you use isolation mode you just double click on it and then command a and then you got everything that you like group together or whatever so yeah i have a full video on that that i'll link below and i probably articulated it better on that video anyway so <laughs> be sure to check that out i also use as you can I probably notice pathfinder like uh, throughout the whole thing but that's pretty much all i'm doing now is i have most of my stuff like the general forms and i just go in and in isolation mode and add stuff and then merge them together so at this point, I'm kind of working on the details more, um, more splashy, more just kind of making everything look runny. And a lot of times, honestly, things don't even really make sense as far as uh, depth or anything. Because like you'll see in a second, I'll start making the red background kind of like conform to the horns and stuff. But and that doesn't make sense because it should be like, you know, the sky or whatever. So it shouldn't necessarily be like yeah like this wrapping around the horns or anything but honestly it just kind of looked cool so i did it um and i didn't really think a lot of times on stuff like that i just don't care if it makes sense like if i think it looks cool i just do it and that's probably not the best advice and it probably like doesn't pay <laughs> pay off in a lot of situations but i just kind of roll with it uh n not overthinking anything like i said just kind of like going with it and then if I even if I think I mess up just kind of like whatever uh just like the shoulder I don't necessarily like the way that looked or even turned out in the end but I just kind of did it and didn't want to overthink it because a lot of times if I spend too much time like overthinking it and drawing stuff over and over then it just turns out bad and I don't know why I guess it's just kind of the spontaneity of stuff like your first answer is the best answer or at least the best answer you have so and as I'm sure you've noticed, like, there's that blue line in the center that's, like, actual, the swatch of blue that I use. And that's because almost everything besides black, I think, I use 80% opacity. Even if I, like, if I want it to be completely dark or whatever, I just still use 80%. Um, that's so you can start getting some of those layers, like, you can see behind it. Like, obviously the horns, the horns are in front of the hood, so I don't necessarily want you to, to be able to see through the horns but on her like main hood and stuff I want you to see through into the background and I don't necessarily know why besides I think it gives it more depth and just kind of makes it feel more watercolory which like if you've ever used watercolor it's kind of hard once you have something down to like get something completely opaque on top of it you still see through a little bit and I like trying to emulate a little bit of that because a lot of my stuff is kind of based off watercolor looking art um, and honestly at this point i have to apologize because i stopped recording <laughs> because i thought i was done i uh, exported all this edited this video posted it to instagram and i wasn't really done with it i was just kind of done with it i i just didn't want to work on it anymore so but then i ended up coming back to it and editing it in Photoshop a little bit more like um, and just editing some of the picture in general so that's how you're getting to this final version um, I wish I I wish I'd recorded it but <laughs> unfortunately um, that's just my mistake so thank you for checking out the video don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed it and yeah have a good day